The Haybike Mars is a fat tyre foldable all-terrain e-bike with three levels of pedal assist, a 48 mile maximum range, adjustable front suspension, Shimano 7 gear system and removable 48 volt 12.5 amp hour battery. It looks incredible, it's mad fun to ride and it even has a pannier rack to carry your gear. Join me, James Bruce, with MUO Reviews as I put the Haybike Mars through its paces on some rough Cornish terrain and around town. The Haybike Mars arrived in a large 35 kilogram box and it's folded up for transport. So the box isn't as long uh, as you might expect, but it's also quite wide. In our case, the battery also arrived separately and that in and of itself is quite a bulky and heavy package, though I'm not sure if that was a quirk of shipping it to the UK. Yours might come all in the same box. Either way, despite our box being fairly damaged on arrival, the bike itself was pretty well packaged, so everything seemed fine. Start by removing all the packaging, cut some of the cable ties in specific places, then unfold the Haybike Mars and use the kickstand to help you with the following steps. There's actually very little construction to do, but it was a little bit more complex than I'd thought, mainly because the folding part of the handlebar stem actually folds diagonally. So you need to line up the handlebar with the wheel, not try to line up the latching mechanism as I did, and then put the handlebar in. But once I had that figured out though, uh, the small diagrams in the manual are not great. It was easy enough to bolt into position, then fix the seat and the pedals. From there, you'll want to fully charge the 48 volt, 12.5 amp hour battery, which is thankfully removable. It has a nice carry handle and it can be taken indoors to charge. To remove it, you'll need to unfold the seat and unlock it using the keys. There's also a rigid plastic cover for the charging port to avoid dust and debris getting in there, though I wouldn't suggest taking this out in heavy rain as the cover doesn't exactly seal everything off and there are potentially other areas for water to ingress too. The charger itself connects using what appears to be an XLR connector and takes about six, seven hours for a full charge. Now, as with any battery powered device, you should leave it on a full charge straight out of the box in order to calibrate it. I know you'll be itching to ride, but just do a full charge first, okay? Now, one thing I will just say is that at first I couldn't actually get the battery to lock on. There's a pin on the back that didn't align with this locking hole on the body. But it was pretty easy to fix. I was able to stick a screwdriver in there and pull up the metal bar with the hole in it. I don't think it points to shoddy workmanship or anything. As I said, the box would pretty dinged when we got it. So it must have just been knocked out of alignment during transport. But just in case you have that same problem, don't stress, it's an easy fix. It just took me a while to figure out uh, why I couldn't turn the key. In terms of design, uh, literally the biggest, most obvious feature is the wheels. They're puncture resistant fat tires, technically four inches wide by 20 inches diameter with a nice deep tread. And these really are impressive tires that wouldn't look out of place on an actual dirt bike. Inside the rim, you also have this nice sort of design flare of a red inner tube that's bulging out from the inside. Very minor point, but it really does look good. Both the seat and the handlebar height can be adjusted as desired. The seat goes up to a maximum height of 34 inches, so it should accommodate anyone from around 5.3 to 6.3 feet, with a maximum total load of 265 pounds or 120 kilograms. However, that does include your luggage. For reference, I'm six foot one and I weigh about 105 kilograms, so I'm definitely near the upper end uh, for sure. There's a fairly standard Shimano seven gear speed system and a derailleur with guard to protect it. And the LCD panel to control the PAS is also a generic bike controller that I've seen before on other bikes. So you might even be familiar with it. It's very simple to operate. There's up, down buttons and a power button. You can also cycle through various ride stats, but there's no app to pair or complex features here. You get a built-in rear brake light and all the mud guards come fitted as standard, so you don't need to fit those. And there's also a front light that you can turn on or off. Again, you don't need to fit that either. As well as the usual loud electronic horn. Pretty standard stuff there. For comfort, you'll find not only a front suspension, which can be locked on or off and can be adjusted to your preferences, but also a seat suspension, which is lovely. How is this not standard on every bike? The other feature I liked more than I thought I would was the pannier rack. So I've been doing quick shopping and delivery trips around town uh, with this using a bit of paracord to secure stuff. 
and it's made what was previously a tedious and tiring 45 minute walk doing up and down a very steep hill into a 15 minute easy round trip. So how does it ride? Before you head out, you should check to ensure the tyres are at 20 PSI. Check out our review of the Fantic Apex X8 if you need a quick emergency inflator to have that done in no time at all. The pedal assist has three levels and it uses a cadence sensor, which means it can be a little bit unrefined. However, I did find it to be very responsive, by which I mean within moments of trying to ride it, it kicks into action. Unlike some other cadence sensors I've tried, which can take a good few seconds of cycling uh, before they wake up. On this, the Hay Bike Mars, there was very much a more immediate effect. However, I will say that this 500 watt motor may take you by surprise. Even on level one, you'll really know when it kicks in immediately. And if you're starting on flat ground, you really do need to be careful. Obviously you shouldn't be riding in a crowded place anyway, but if you are around people at all, then kill the motor. Otherwise you may unintentionally find yourself plowing over someone. Now, while the pedal assist does feel very much sort of all or nothing with the speed controls, you can actually get a little more fine control using the throttle alone. And if I'm honest, I found myself using this to actually push off more often than not. Hands up, I'm quite lazy. So you can get started with just the throttle and then put some extra effort in to pedal uh, and the pedal assist will just take over and keep on going for you. It's not a one or the other kind of thing. So you can switch between pedaling and the throttle and the pedal assist really easily. So I really pushed the bike to its limits and for the most part, it handled the terrain I threw at it really well. It can handle inclines, but I did need to pedal a fair bit. The motor alone wasn't quite enough to get me up a steep hill. That said, this isn't a scrambler. Don't expect it to get up 45 degree hillsides at all and do beware of big rocks. The pedals and your feet are still quite low to the ground and I did scrape along a few times. Honestly though, it's the most comfortable bike ride I've had yet. Whether that's on the street, off-road paths, grass, gravel, sandy paths, it handled them all superbly. The fat tires definitely help to stabilize and give you more surface area to grip with. There was only one occasion where I actually felt it sort of slip out from under me. Otherwise it basically felt safe the entire time I was riding this. And that's really not something I would normally say about an e-bike. So let's talk about the folding aspect briefly for storage and transport. When I say it's foldable for easy transport, I don't mean carrying it. It weighs a ton or well, to be specific, 0.03 metric tons or 30 kilograms four kilograms of which is the battery alone, but it can fit in the back of your car without a problem. You won't need a separate bike rack. And don't let the whole foldable aspect put you off either. It doesn't make it any less durable. The locking mechanisms on here are extremely sturdy. In terms of range, I achieved about 20 miles uh, around and about over the moors, but that was on really rough terrain pretty steep hills and using as much of the power assist as I could or even just the throttle and I am very close to the weight limit. So while the 48 mile range isn't necessarily inflated, it is under ideal laboratory conditions with someone who weighs much less than me riding on flat, decent terrain. Just riding around town, I got a lot more like 30 miles. So is the Hay Bike Mars the off-road foldable e-bike for you? This isn't the first e-bike or scooter that I've reviewed, but it is the first that I've genuinely kept on thinking of excuses to ride every day because it's that much fun. Now, I haven't even mentioned the price so far, and some of you might be thinking, oh, hang on now, come on, he's gonna hit us with, with some absurd price tag. And actually, no. Right now, you can pick it up for just over $1,000 on Amazon, though this is discounted from the RRP of 1,399 which is still good, but if you're quick, it's gonna be an absolute bargain. Now that's amazing for the power and the features that you get with this. I mean, it's one of the cheapest e-bikes that you'll find, never mind the fact that it's superior to any other bike at this price point. It's packed with power, a removable battery, these gorgeous fat tires, and the whole thing folds up in the back of your car. The Hay Bike Mars is a little bit weird. It's clearly not going to suit everyone's taste. And the only downside to this heavyweight monster is that it is heavy and cumbersome. It really is designed to be used alongside the pedal assist. If you don't actually want to use the electronic assistant part of that that often, uh, 
then you might struggle. Unless you're going downhill, the fat tires and the sheer weight do mean that it's quite unwieldy and difficult to just pedal. I also think it could do with a little more nuance to the speed settings. You can adjust them yourself and enable, say, a seven speed setting where the lowest is a lot less power than the default lowest speed on this. But that feels like something that should have been set at the factory rather than having to delve into a complex menu system that can potentially brick your bike's firmware. That's not something I would attempt myself, but there are instructions that you can find to do that sort of thing online. But overall, if you're looking for a powerful, fun, distinctive yet practical ride, something you can potentially fold up and put in the back of the car that will handle streets as well as all kinds of really rough terrain, this is it. And at an entirely reasonable thousand dollars. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope I've helped you to make up your mind about the Hay Bike Mars. Easily, it's a recommended from me. I am completely enamored with this. Hit like if it did help you and consider subscribing for more weekly reviews, gadget giveaways and more from all of us over at MakeUseOff.com.